Welcome to The Chem Doctor, and uh, this is the second video in the series on electrochemistry. Now, um, to begin, what, what everyone needs to sort of line up around is the idea that uh, electrochemistry has to do with using chemical reactions to uh, generate electrical current. So let's start off with the definition of what electrical current is. So an electrical current literally is the flow of charge and we can generate flow of charge in a, a couple of different ways. We can do it by moving electrons and we can also do it by um, moving ions. Um, so if you think about this a little bit, if you have a, a sample of distilled water, uh, distilled water will not conduct electricity but if you dissolve uh, if you dissolve uh, an ionic compound in the water and you generate a solution that contains free ions, then the resulting solution will conduct electricity because now it contains ions that can respond to a potential difference or uh, the, the generation of uh, an electrical current by, by establishing electrodes uh, in the solution where one electrode uh, contains uh, um, a, a high uh, proportion of electrons, uh, whereas the other elect uh, electrode uh, contains a low proportion of electrons, and there's a net movement of electrons from one from one electrode to the other. And in response to the movement of electronic charge, then uh, uh, ions flow in order to maintain charge balance. So we can use certain kinds of chemical reactions to generate electrical current. Specifically, oxidation reduction reactions involve the movement of electrons from one component in the reaction to another component in the reaction. Now, not all oxidation reduction uh, reactions are, are applicable to electrochemistry. and you, you might argue that only a special class of reactions um, works conveniently to generate situations where we can capitalize on, on the reaction to produce electrons in such a way that we can capture that electrical energy, if you will, and then utilize it to do things. So remember what we use electricity for. All right, We use it to uh, generate light. We use it to run cell phones. We use it uh, to to run appliances like refrigerators, for example, or the coffee grinder that I used to to uh, grind the beans a few minutes ago, uh, in order to make a cup of coffee, uh, a cup of coffee, and so on. So the idea here is that we're going to use an oxidation reduction reaction in such a way to generate the flow of charge and. The, the, the application uh, mainly is going to be in the generation of batteries that we can use to run uh, various appliances like cell phones uh, and or the flip side of that we can utilize electrical energy in such a way uh, to uh, plate different kinds of metals onto the surfaces of, of, of other uh, objects in, in the form of electroplating. Alright, so let's get started. So in this case, the model um, chemical reaction that we're going to uh, focus on here is the reaction between zinc and uh, copper ion to produce uh, copper metal and zinc ion. All right, this is a classic metallic um, oxidation reduction reaction. Um, this particular reaction, I've gone ahead and calculated the delta G for it. And the delta G for this reaction is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of around minus 200 kilojoules per mole of reaction. What this means is that we're, we're dealing with a chemical reaction here that is highly spontaneous. Now, uh, remember, if you're a student of chemistry, that you need to uh, uh, understand when I say it, this is highly spontaneous. I'm not talking about a time frame here, although the kinetics of this reaction is, is very, very fast. What I'm talking about here is that, that equilibrium for this reaction lies very, very far to the right. So if I was to actually calculate a, a, an equilibrium constant for this, it's, it's on, in the neighborhood of around 10 to the 30, 37th. So what that means is that the proportion of products 
two reactants for this reaction once it reaches equilibrium uh, favors pro uh, products. In other words, there's going to be around 10 to the 37th products in the reaction mixture at equilibrium for, for every product, or for, excuse me, for every reactant molecule. So in general, the reactions that we use uh, for uh, electrochemical applications are going to be reactions whose equilibrium in general lies very hard to the right. So these reactions, once you combine the two reactants, uh, uh, tend to go forward uh, like gangbusters, all right? And they produce um, large proportions of, of products by comparison to the reactants. Now, there are consequences to this. We can split the, um, since this is an oxidation uh, reduction reaction, all right, let me just stipulate here make sure I'm clear for the viewer. So the, so the zinc is being oxidized in this reaction and the copper ion, this is Cu plus two, notice the aqueous here. That means since this is an ionic compound that it's fully ionized, the copper ion is reduced. So the zinc uh, is going to ionize uh, losing two electrons, all right? So we lose two electrons. We gain uh, two electrons here. We can write, we can split this, if you will, into two half reactions. So these are the half reactions, all right? And I've written the two half reactions in the same direction. So I've written these to show oxidation for both reactions. Notice the half arrows here. So we're talking about the equilibrium position of the oxidation of both of these metals. And the point I want to make here is that is that the equilibrium for the oxidation of the zinc falls much further to the right. All right, I'm going to label this much further to the right than for the copper. So when you combine zinc and the copper equilibriums together, the zinc equilibrium exerts pressure on the copper equilibrium. So in other words, the um, zinc is more easily oxidized than copper is. The net result of this is that if you combine zinc metal and copper ion together in the same location, or you couple the two reactions into one reaction, the oxidation of the zinc is going to spontaneously reduce copper ion. So let's go ahead and write this in, in a way that shows that, all right? So we're gonna have, I'm gonna rewrite my zinc half reaction this way, showing the oxidation, and then I'm going to write the copper reaction showing the correct relationship to the zinc. Like this. Whoops. Like this. All right, and then we're going to put a line underneath this and we're going to sum the two reactions together. And you can see that when we do this, here this is the oxidation half reaction. Uh, this is the reduction half reaction now labeled correctly. So we went from this place here where we're talking about the relationship between the oxidation equilibriums for the two reactions where for the zinc that reaction lies much further to the right than it does for the copper. So when these two things are combined, the, the zinc reaction is going to actually have the effect of putting pressure on the copper reaction to run in reverse. So the zinc reaction, the oxidation of the zinc, will cause the reduction of the copper. When we add these two things together, we see that we'll cancel the electrons because these two reactions are one to one. For uh, the zinc loses two electrons, the copper two uh, gains exactly two electrons. And what we end up with here when we add this together is the net ionic oxidation reduction reaction for the formation of uh, zinc ion and copper metal, which is essentially the reaction that I have at the top of this diagram. 
Now, the whole point behind this is that we can use this reaction to generate electricity if we do a clever thing with it. And what I mean by that is what we're going to do is we're going to separate the two half reactions into separate compartments. All right, so I'm going to draw a picture here. Imagine that we've got literally two beakers. All right, and it, on, in the beaker on the left, what we're going to do is take a piece of zinc, zinc metal and we're going to bend it. And we're going to set it in so it's hooked over the beaker. I'll label this now. Zinc metal. And in the other container, I'll use a color, we're going to take a piece of copper metal and we're going to bend it and hook it over the other side of the beaker. Uh, let me try to fix that. I know my coppers always end up looking like calciums and that's not, that's purely by accident. All right, there's my copper piece of metal hooked over the side of the beaker. Now, into the, the beaker on the left, what we're going to do is we're going to add a solution of one molar zinc sulfate. Remember, the zinc sulfate is completely aqueous, and that means that the zinc sulfate is completely ionized. So in the container on the left, we have zinc ion and we have sulfate. In the solution on the right, we're going to have one molar copper sulfate. Same deal with the copper sulfate is completely soluble. And that means that the copper sulfate is completely ionized on this side. Now, what we want to have happen here is we want this chemical reaction to happen is in the way that we've written it here. So we've got to connect the two compartments so that they can talk to each other electronically. So we're going to take a wire and we're going to connect the zinc electrode all right, and in the middle here, I'm going to put a box so that we can, uh, in a minute, talk about the voltage. And we're going to connect that wire to the copper electrode here. Now, if this box was a voltmeter, in the very instant that we connected this electrode, the zinc electrode, to the copper electrode, you you would see the flash of voltage here right the flash of voltage here and then all of a sudden the system would go dead and read zero now i'm going to come back to that concept in a minute because basically over here on the left uh we're going to call this side of our uh our contraption here the anode and the anode is where we have oxidation going on. So the zinc is being oxidized to Zn plus 2 plus 2 electrons. And over here, we're going to call the right side of this the cathode. And on this side, the copper ion is being reduced to copper metal. All right, so the right side of our compartment is going to be where we have reduction going on. Basically, another way to represent that is that the copper ion, let me, I'm going to change the color of this. The copper ion over here, all right, is going to be accepting electrons. And plating itself out on the copper electron. On the other side of this thing, we have the zinc metals which are on the surface of this electrode, or I'll, I mean it basically represents the electrode, that will be converted to zinc ion, all right? And the question is, where are the electrons going? Well, the electrons are going to be traveling through the wire from the side where, we're, where we have the oxidation going on. And let me, let me stipulate that in, in harder terms over here. So we have oxidation. And over here we have reduction. So the cathode is reduction. 
the anode is oxidation. This is always going to be the case for your electrochemical cells, all right? And that's, if you haven't figured it out, that's what we're building here. This is an electrochemical cell. This is an electrochemical cell. Uh, it's also called a voltaic cell. And it's also called a galvanic cell. Okay, those names are all uh, used to describe what we're dealing with here. So your electrons are going to be moving through this wire from the side where they're being oxidized to the side where we have the reduction going on. So that's where the, electron, the electrons are coming from that are reducing the copper here. All right, and, and I, I previously published a video before this one to actually show you the plating of the copper with a 16 penny nail and I highly recommend that you see that video before looking at this one all right so that you have a clear idea what's going on here now coming back uh, to what I mentioned earlier so we set up a beaker that that has the zinc electrode on one side copper electrode on the other this we have a solution of one molars zinc ion uh, um, on the anode side we have a one molar solution of copper ion on the other side we hook up a voltmeter to this for a, for a literally a singular instant. If you're paying attention, you'll see the volt, the flash of voltage, and then the system just shuts down like that, and now you've got zero. So what's going on? All right. Well, the electrons begin to move here, but what happens essentially instantaneously is that as the electrons move from the anode side, all right, because we have electronic pressure here we actually have a negative pressure here moving towards the absence of electronic pressure on the right side so this is like water behind a dam all right where the zinc side of the system here is the water behind the dam and the copper system over here is the stream bed at the base of the dam and the water wants to run all right but, but there's a problem in the beginning here because the electrons try to move and immediately there is a charge buildup that goes against the flow. It's like somebody sticks their finger in the hole at the base of the dam and plugs the water. And we need to unplug that hole. We need to pull the finger out. So what we're going to do to release or stop the buildup of charge is we're going to insert into this system uh, what we call a salt bridge. All right, a salt bridge. Now, the purpose of the salt bridge is to provide ions uh, that move in response to electron movement. And I'm just going to abbreviate that down there like that. So think about what's going on here. All right, on the left side of the system here, as electrons move from the zinc or from the anode to the cathode, all right, we have the buildup of zinc ions here. So we have a buildup of positive charge. We have positive charge building on this side, and we have over on the, on the right side, the copper ions are going away. So we have the buildup. of negative charge on the right side here. So what ends up happening, um, and this is getting a little bit cluttered here, but I'll do my best with it, is in the salt bridge, all right, uh, maybe, maybe I'll put it over here, so salt bridge. We have sulfate polyanions that will be moving to the left to offset the fact that you've got zinc ions that are being produced here. And in the salt bridge, we're also going to contain, well, so we're going to put a specific kind of salt in there. And uh, um, what I'm going to say that we're using here is going to be Na2SO4 in the salt bridge. So the salt bridge might, might involve uh, literally hang, hanging a saturated napkin over the side of these, over the side of the beakers or 
Um, a more sophisticated one would be to have some kind of a glass tube filled with a gelatin and in the gelatin you would have dissolved sodium sulfate. So the sulfates are going to move through the bridge uh, towards the, the, uh, the side where the zinc ions are being produced and sodium ions are going to be moving uh, towards the side of the uh, compartment where the copper ions are being reduced and going away. All right, And as soon as we have ions that, that can move, as soon as we have ions that can move, then what's going to happen on the voltmeter, if this was set up uh, very well, is if for this particular system, you're going to see about 1.1 volts coursing through the voltmeter. Now, if you actually set this up in the laboratory, what you're going to get is something less than 1.1 volts because, truthfully, it's impossible in a laboratory setting uh, where you're using jungle science, usually like I am in mine, where you literally are throwing this together with beakers and bent pieces of metal over the side of the beaker. And usually I end up draping a napkin over the side of these with, uh, with a saturated solution of sodium sulfate. The, the voltage is going to be less than 1.1 volts. And I'll come back later in the next video to describe how we actually calculate this value and where it comes from. For, for now, all I wanted to do was set up the system. Now, remember, what we achieved here is we set up a system that has allowed us to generate a current of electricity. And this current of electricity, due to the fact that we've got an oxidation reduction reaction going on, this flow of electricity now can be used to do things, like it can be used to run a cell phone or a, a, a laptop computer and so on, all right? And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the video.